going to call this meeting to order is 618. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, I first want to acknowledge that today is the first day of Passover. And in Judaism, this is the holiday that can commemorate the uh, Hebrew liberation from slavery from Egypt. And I know that this day was not convenient to everybody. Uh, we apologize. We're going to try to do better. It fell right in our calendar. And as we explained last fall, we're going to try to do better at looking at our calendar as we as we move uh, forward. So um, sorry about that. But thank you for all for being here uh, tonight. I'm excited about the conversations that we're uh, hoping to have ahead it, as we continue to develop a unified vision and make sense of the future together. Uh, and this continues to you know do that groundwork for that continuing trust and collaboration for years to come and we can all develop a shared understanding of what we want for all our students at Washington Central. With that, I'm gonna pass it to Megan. Great, thank you. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, I'm also excited to kick off and start sharing some more detail um, about this process. And um, I'm in a second gonna introduce uh, Jeannie Phillips, our coach through this process. Uh, but I wanted to start by sharing a little bit about um, kind of how we landed with working with Great Schools Partnership. So um, in the kind of November, December time frame, we pulled together a group of people to say, what is it we're looking for in an organization that will help us through this process? Because as Floor said, this is about um, understanding what it is our communities want for our kids, um, and then how do we get there? And um, we had really specific thoughts about what we were looking for. Um, put out a request for proposals, we got several back, um, and great schools, even through that process, was excellent at kind of shifting and, hey, can you think about this? Um, and so we're really excited to be working with them. Jeannie's gonna share a little bit more about them as an organization. Um, we're gonna share some things. We have some members of our steering committee here, although not all, um, so we'll share that with you, and then there will be time at the end to answer questions, so. Introduce Jeannie. Hi everyone, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jeannie Phillips. Um, I've lived in Vermont. Am I speaking loud enough for you? Great. I've lived in Vermont for 23 years now. Um, I moved first to Southern Vermont, Londonderry, Vermont, um, when my son was a, a newborn and um, became a school librarian at Chester Andover Elementary School and then moved up to Green Mountain Middle and High School, grades seven to 12, also in Chester, Vermont. And, before leaving that uh, role to work at the University of Vermont for five years in the, at the Tarrant Institute for Innovative Education, working largely with middle schools to better meet the needs of middle level learners. Um, and then more recently, I've joined a Great Schools Partnership as a senior associate, and I want to talk a little bit about what they do. They're based out of Portland, Maine. I still live in Vermont. I still get to live here in this beautiful state. Um, so Great Schools is a nonprofit organization that supports schools um, and works to redesign public education in order to improve learning for all students. And um, we have some uh, core tenets that are aligned with the work that you're doing. Um, we work towards anti-racist, inclusive, and equitable practices, policies, and cultures. Uh, we are focused often on proficiency-based teaching and learning. Um, we advocate for multiple and flexible pathways that promote deep learning as well as student voice and choice in their education. Uh, we believe in shared data-informed decision-making amongst educators, students, families, and community members. Uh, and trusting, building trusting relationships between students, families, and educators. And finally, um, we are advocates for professional learning groups for educators. Um, a central part of the work we do is our definition, um, oops, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> our vision is about thriving schools and communities um, where every student is getting what they need in order to move towards a more equitable society. Uh, and our mission is to support, challenge, and collaborate with educators and communities to achieve educational excellence and equity. Uh, equity is a word we hear a lot. And um, one of the reasons, oops, I'm stuck.
stuck, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, uh, one of the reasons I decided to work for grade schools is because of their definition of equity. It's the toothiest, most meaningful definition of equity I've, I've seen in an organization like this. So grade schools, at grade schools, we believe that educational equity means ensuring just outcomes for each student, raising historically marginalized voices, and challenging imbalances of power and privilege. Were there any questions about grade schools before I move on? So Megan alluded to your work here, and this language comes straight from the request for proposals, um, which is the purpose of this work is to engage in a multi-year visioning and strategic planning process with an emphasis on equity engagement in order to unify the school district around a common understanding of what our community believes all students should experience as they go through the educational system here. These are your words. <laughs> and so um, we began this work in March, and our first step was to um, select steering committee members. And some of them are here, so I wondered if the steering committee members that are here want to briefly introduce themselves. Do you want to get us started, Floyd? Sure, I'll get us started. I'm Flor Diaz-Smith, and I'm part of the committee and chair of the board. And Pass it on to, to me. Harry. <laughs> I'm Kari Bradley from Callis. I'm a board member. Um, Eric Anderson um, from East Montpelier and a board member. I'm Julie Moore. I'm a community member from Middlesex. I'm Adrian Medita, a community member from Middlesex also. Kat Fair, um, community member from Callis and Callis uh, School Principal. I'm Jen Miller, so I'm the curriculum director, and I'm also a Middlesex resident. I'm Chani Waterhouse. I'm a community member from Worcester. I'm Stephen Dellinger Pate. I'm the principal here at U32. Thank you all for that. You can see there are other um, community members uh, representing. Um, we have a student and possibly a second student joining our committee. Um, we have community partners, educators, teachers from different buildings. There may be, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there may be on Zoom some additional members. I don't know if oh. you wanted to, because um, I did see um, Arlen. Uh, oh, oh, thanks. Uh, Thank Diane. you, Diane. Diane, I appreciate you queuing yeah. us to do that. Too. Hi, I'm Arlen Brooksley. I'm a community member from Callis, and I'm also a librarian and technology teacher at East Montpelier Elementary School. Is Arlen the only one? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for that. Um, our steering committee met for the first time last week and had our introductory meeting, and we're just getting started. And one of the things we talked about was the role of the steering committee. Um, and their primary role is listening. At great schools, uh, we believe in equitable community engagement and really reaching out, not just to the people who just show up anyway. You know those, there are those people. Some of you are in the room right now. And your voices are super important, but also making sure to hear from voices that maybe uh, meetings like this are less convenient for. Um, voices that um, we want to go out and hear them where they are. Uh, we want to give them an extra special invite because maybe they don't always feel included. And so it's important that we listen to those voices. And um, honestly, that listening, that, that process is also a product. It's a product of building trust and relationships with your community. And so that's an important part of the steering committee's job. Uh, once they do this listening, they're going to have a lot of data. Another thing they're going to do is synthesize that data and information and, and make some drafts. And then go back and listen some more by soliciting feedback. How are we doing? Did we hear you well? Have we heard everything? What might we have missed? And revising after they solicit that feedback. And then continuing to be in connection, communicating with the community back and forth. And that communication is a two-way street. This is what we've heard so far. What else? This is what we've heard. We've revised it again. What else? And so that's, that's, that's their, um, their role through this process. It's going to be a lot of work, and I'm really grateful um, for all the ways they showed up already and will continue to do so. 
I'm always leaving a little space for you, but you seem to have covered it. <laughs> Um, uh, this is our timeline, and, um, and so we started in March with just seeing who was interested in being on the steering committee and thinking about representation on the steering committee, and, um, and then we're gonna, I'm going to walk you through each of the phases. We'll end in January of 2024. Um, and so phase one, is we're just laying the groundwork, um, and the next job of the steering committee is to design for community engagement. So we are going to start designing uh, community conversations where we take what we already know, your vision, um, the visioning work you've already done, and we take that out to the community and say, how does this land? What else is important? What else do you need us to know that it's important for the young people in your community, for this school, for all the schools um, in this district, and the, um, and the things we want um, so that our young people can um, realize their hopes and dreams. And so once they've designed, we'll start facilitating those community conversations and collecting that feedback, listening, note-taking, um, gathering that data, and drafting a vision and core beliefs. It might be revising the vision you already have and getting to what's important in this community, and then making sure we heard them well by soliciting for feedback. So that's where we are right now. There's going to be other data besides, I, I, you're going to hear me say data and data because every time I say it, it sounds wrong to me. So just apologies for me switching it up. I never know which way I say it. Um, and so the other uh, data we're going to use um, is uh, your students right now are taking the youth risk behavior survey. That data is going to be really important. Um, the local common assessment data, how your, how your students are doing on a variety of assessments is going to be data we look at. And then um, in the coming weeks, uh, um, myself and my colleague Kate Cardoki are going to be doing equity pulse checks in each of your buildings. And just a little explainer about what an equity pulse check is and what that process looks like. Um, uh, that definition of educational equity that I shared earlier Grade Schools has developed a bunch of indicators for what does that look like in schools when we're doing that well. Mm -hmm. And we have a tool that I'm going to bring to each of your schools and sit down with your, the staff, the educators in your building, and they're going to do a little personal reflection. Then they're going to get in small groups and build some consensus, and we're just going to get a sense of where are the strengths for each school, and where are their opportunities for growth, and set some priorities. Um, doing that will help us gather some data. We'll have a sense of strengths and opportunities for growth challenges in each of the buildings. Um, it also is an opportunity for the administrators in that building to, to think about professional learning for next year, continuous improvement plans, and to use that data in that way too. So that'll, um, it's a seed that feeds many birds. It's funny, the piece that I was going to add is what you said at the end. I think, you know, one of the things that, that people have asked quite a bit along the way is um, how do you combine data and information about who we are with community perspective? And so I think this is a really important piece. And then I would just echo that we will receive this in real time, um, we meaning schools and administration, and be able to do something with it and react to it, which is a really nice thing. Um, and this is a good conversation on the heels of our ed quality meeting where we're also talking about how does the board look at um, data about our schools. So it, it's just nice to have these processes mesh. Um, in phase two, we'll be sort of getting to this more final version of what the vision and core beliefs are. Um, and so things will start to gel a little bit at that, at that topmost level. And then we'll start um, getting into smaller focus groups to draft some goals based on those um, beliefs and that vision. And so what are our goals going to be? Now that we have all this data, what are we working towards? And again, we'll be soliciting feedback on those goals. So again, there will be this transparent process of we think these are our goals, what do you think? Okay, now we think these are our goals, what do you think? Uh, by the end of summer, moving into the fall, um, we'll be moving towards action. Um, and so those, as those goals start to gel up and get kind of more solid, uh, we'll be starting to think about what are the action steps that go with those goals? How do we get really concrete about what, 
what these goals mean we're going to do in our buildings. And so uh, we're going to be facilitating work groups. Again, these will be smaller groups, not huge community forums, but smaller groups. But they're going to differ, differ than focus groups in that they're going to be a little targeted. So for example, um, a goal that has emerged in another district that I'm working with is wellness, student well-being and wellness. And if that is a goal that emerges here, we might think strategically as a, as a committee about who, who's got really good information and knowledge and expertise about young people and wellness. And so we might target your health educators, your PE educators, counselors, both school counselors and counselors out in the community, um, other people in the community who uh, do work on um, young people's well-being, physical, mental well-being. And those folks will come and help us get really into those action steps. This is what this looks like. And again, <laughs> we'll solicit feedback. It'll be an iterative process of saying, okay, what did we miss? Okay, give us some feedback on this every step of the way. The one thing I would add in both phase two and three, you know, we've heard the question quite a bit around how does this process dovetail and inform conversations that we have to have as a system about mm -hmm. um, how do, we, how do we make all of these goals and, and visions happen for kids, and what does that mean about our structure? And it's in these two phases that we start to understand where it is that we're headed, which is the time that we then will also have those conversations. And um, I think that's important for two reasons. One, and this part you've probably heard me say before, we need to know where we're headed in order to know how to structure ourselves. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Um, but the other reason, and this came up at our steering committee meeting, and I think it's really important, is that in this process, we hope we're also building trust in how we approach this work with our communities. And as we build that trust, we will hopefully have, that trust will extend to how we're going to have to make some difficult decisions. Um, and we're also going to learn about how, to, how we need to engage in our community, what worked, what didn't work, what were ways that um, solicited a lot of those voices we don't hear, what didn't work, and then how can we use those methods to communicate and engage about other things moving forward. So um, lots of folks have asked kind of where that work sits, and it is both parallel and integrated, um, and this, is start, this starts to inform it in a more concrete way. Um. Phase four is really where we start to finalize those action steps and thus the whole, the whole plan, um, engaging in feedback too, so that by January 2024, you have a really solid strategic plan that has, that has um, sort of a trail of transparency with the data from community conversations, from focus groups, from work groups all along the way, and those feedback sessions where we're soliciting feedback. And that plan informs your work going forward. So we know that there's a lot of questions, and there may be questions on the screen. Before we jump to that, is there anything that anyone from the steering committee wants to add, or something we missed, or um, we didn't tell you we were going to ask you that, so it's okay. <laughs> you don't have anything, but I, um, I did um, recall a conversation that we had in the steering committee, the first meeting, about vision. We already have a vision in place, and what does that mean um, as we engage in this process? Away, and then we read. What does it mean? I think that would be a good question Yeah, thank you for that. And we, we talked a lot about how um, it's frustrating to go through a process that feels like you're just doing it for the sake of doing it. Like, if we already have a mission, isn't that? Um, and so I'm appreciative about this process that's designed to A, test that. Is that still what we want and believe for our kids? And and maybe we're hearing from more people to inform that. But we are building off of it, because there is, we are doing good work in the system, and um, both things are true. I would just add that I think that the, um, the design committee that starts designing that first community, those first community conversations, is going to grapple with, like, how do we use this vision and other work that we've done in, to engage folks in the conversation about, okay, here's where we've been going, is this still where we're going, and what else can we add? And so that'll be the work of the, um, the, de the 
the section of the design of the steering committee that wants to really design the agenda and the um, uh, sort of of those early convenings. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I just got an email from someone who says that they're having a hard time accessing Zoom. They're trying to link from the agenda and oh. are getting the waiting for the host to start the meeting message. Oh, no. Because we have a lot of people. I there's a lot of people on. If there's a lot of people And I know on. I logged on from the agenda. <laughs> do, you, and I, do you see the this link on the calendar is the one that we're using? I don't know what so Maybe it's that they, we have our wrong link on the agenda. Hey, Arlen? Yeah, I was going to say I was using um, the one from the agenda, and I did just check. You know, it's hard to tell because it's a tiny URL, yeah. but I did just check by copying it again, and it is an incorrect meeting. Um, I got in because Alicia sent me the correct one. So oh, okay, sorry about that. So, so, uh, so Mark, you... what's the what's the meeting ID number? Yeah, and you can send them from your calendar, uh, Jonas. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, 8080-67867453. That's it. In the passcode 6992530. That's it. Is it possible to go back to the uh, the steps or the phases? Yeah. 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 It's like Jeannie was saying, if you guys wanted to share your word at the end, how were you feel? I thought that was a great exercise of how are you feeling about this so the people that are in the steering committee, if you don't mind sharing, if you remember. But <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that was last week. Like, like, <laughs> just to be clear, I think what Floor is saying is at the end of a two hour meeting, we said in three words or less, how are you feeling now about the work ahead? And I, I had more than one word. I always do hopeful and excited. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think it's you know it's helpful for people to you know to know that about it, and you don't have to. But if you feel like I don't know, Jeff, yeah, no, sorry. You know, uh, my word was ready. ready. Mm. Yeah. Com complexity. I can't remember, but I'm sure it was something like excited and hopeful. Also, mm -hmm. just it's, hearing this again is thrilling. <clears throat> My word was open-hearted. Yeah. Two words. <laughs> Two, you can I've just... slept since then. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, do you remember? Oh, she shared. Complexity. Complexity. Oh, complexity. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Um, well, tonight, the first two words came to my head. I was hopeful and excited as well. So. Mm -hmm. I do remember a couple people that think mine, I was one of them. Overwhelmed, so I think it's fair to say it's a big process. It's it, it I'm equally excited, and I, you know, it's hard work making sure we do this well, and that's part of again why I appreciate that it'll be iterative. We won't get it right the first time. We won't get the engagement right the first time, but we will learn a lot. Um, I would I would add that um, there's some you have hiring great schools means that. Yes, I'm the coach. This the meeting is being recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the coach on this, so I, I'm going to be present a lot. Oh. Um, thank you for muting me. Um, <laughs> but we also have other um, folks we can leverage at grade schools partnership, including our um, director of research, uh, Bryn. Whitmer, who's going to be doing a lot of synthesizing of data, and we've already leveraged um, my colleague Gwen Merrick, who's done some of the graphic design of the phases, and will be a part of the process going forward, too, as well as other folks. Kate Gardoki, who's joining us um, for some work. She's super excited to be back in this district. She's done a little work with Stephen in the past and um, doing some of those equity pulse checks. Great, so we can move into questions. You have Arlen, too. Yeah. Oh, Arlen, do you want to share your word? So I or don't words. quite remember my word. I remember feeling um, excited and optimistic and also overwhelmed. Um, but I did also want to say that one thing that I really appreciated about our first meeting was an acknowledgement of um, the work that we're taking on and the way, the various ways that the uh, members of the committee will be uh, asked to engage with members of our community, like really looking at and recognizing um, 
that we all have different strengths and that we have a large group of people that we really need to involve in this because everyone in that room and i'm sure everyone in this room either physical or virtually from canada hey, um are uh, are here because we absolutely want uh, the best educational system and opportunities for our kids and it's there was a real um focus on our students and what needs to happen to also balance the needs of a changing community. And I just felt that was um, really clear and the um, and I'm grateful to the facilitator. I felt like we really have the right person in the room and I just wanted to say that. So thank you for including me on that thing. Palace Peeps, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Arlene. Is that kind of question? Yes. yes. So how, how do you know that you're getting enough community input uh, through this process so that you can then represent that this is what the community wants for the students. Yeah, what's, really, the, what's the criteria for that? I really appreciate that question. I think the steering committee itself will grapple with the, what those criteria are. I think we've already started to think about who's on the steering committee and where are they from. And then one of the roles, Arlen just spoke of roles. You know, not everybody's a facilitator. Not everybody's a writer, right? So there are a couple roles we sort of delineated as facilitator, uh, designer, um, drafter, or writer, um, but we also uh, delineated our um, like tech community liaisons, the people who are in touch, who are culture brokers really with their communities, who can reach out and make sure that we're getting at those voices. I think the other way we're thinking about this, and this doesn't answer the question of criteria, mm -hmm. but it answers the question of how we're going to engage in the work is to not only do the work at schools, but to get out into communities and hold some of these meetings where people are and at times uh, where it's convenient for them and not just convenient for us as a committee. And then the, the final thing is we've already as a committee been leaning on um, some really well-researched and well-developed work through great schools on equitable community engagement. And what do we mean when we say equitable community engagement which is different than sending it out an email and listening to whoever shows up, but being really strategic about that. And so for my colleague Jose is one of those people whose work, is, whose expertise is in equitable community engagement. And so I'll lean on him too to help us think about what, what are the criteria? How do we know we're hearing from a broad enough um, cross section of your community? And then our definition of educational equity says raising uh, historically marginalized voices, and I think that's another thing we'll be thinking about is who do we typically not hear from and how do we get to hear from them? Yeah, and I would add, um, part of, to me it's a lot like universally designing something, uh, you know, part, and that's all, I think actually, for me the word is less criteria and more all of the different access and entry points to the process and then we are going to have to go back and look at that. What did we get from the survey version of feedback? What did we get from the focus group? Um, how can we build off? One of the things the committee will do in this next phase is build off of the community mapping we did, um, which, you know, picking that up again, that, that was good work, and, and we'll continue it. So it is a little bit like, here are the, here are the things research tells us about how we reached, and then how did we do? That's that recursive. Part. Is there one or more methods that didn't work? Um, Jeannie also hinted, and I think actually, well actually I don't remember who suggested it. Someone added a role of the committee, which is sort of a networker, communicator type role, to say what did we miss? What you know? So I think it's recursive. I think we'll I think we'll have to double back probably. Um, yeah. Can, can can you you know, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, sorry, no. I just wanted them to talk a little bit about the thought exchange platform that came up too. Can yeah. I just add to that yeah. that discussion, though, Chris? Because that question did come up, um, and we said we would re return to it at our next meeting. In terms of how we how are we going to know if we're successful, both in terms of the process, do we get enough engagement that'll be widely supported by the community, and the content of the plan itself? Is it going to provide enough clarity to help us do what we need to do? And I would say we're going to think about it. But if anybody has input into that, we will, we'd love your help because it's not clear, right? No, 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 it's hard. It, right. Yeah, Floor reminded me, um, I'm not sure if people are familiar with the thought exchange platform that also came up as an idea. It's a survey 
uh, it's more way more than a survey actually, but it's a online platform, pretty accessible to use, that creates affinity from comments, so a really broad mm -hmm. question can be asked, and then the answers that come out of it, the, pro the program, merges them, takes themes, and then it will like kind of put back out, here are the top five things that came out of that question, and then those become additional questions. And it's, um, so it's another, again, universal design, that's still not gonna work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So there's that, there's in person, there's um, not in person but virtual, there's small group, like, you know, people that aren't going to want to, you know, all the things. So. Okay, thanks. And then I'm assuming that, um, you know, we're five very different communities. So the community representation on the steering committee as well as then making sure that we're gathering information. And trusting that. Yes. Yes. I would say the steering committee's job is to say how what are the groups that we have to go out and figure out and um, absolutely who who is a who's a focus group in and of themselves who who is a things like that so for sure. I'm curious about um, channels of communication and it feels like the innovation and sort of the gorilla approach to community engagement is like the, uh, the right tactic, but is there also sort of like a consistent channel of communication that people will be able to check in on progress? I think mm -hmm. for some they'll have availability before summer, for some availability during summer. How can we check in on the progress? Yeah, so we've had a couple of thoughts. I actually kind of imagine that it'll be a, a subgroup of our group who focuses on communication by itself. But some of the things initially we've talked about, some are, are simple. We will have a section on our website that will be our strategic planning session, section. So it'll ju that's just a clearinghouse. It's a place to put everything. So the notes from our steering committee meetings, the video from this session, the probably a frequently asked questions document. Um, probably an, an open all the time survey that is just and and if we and maybe it's a thought exchange it's a clearinghouse we will use some of our typical methods that we're improving every day um, to be able to push that out more regularly the board itself can expect that it'll be an agenda item at every single one of our meetings um, so that you will get probably updates from um, myself and the board reps um, same with the community, the district newsletter going out. Um, so those are little pieces, and communication is its own identified role that I would imagine a group of people will add to that, for sure. Looks like you have more, Dan. I do have another question. Oh, sorry. I was, <laughs> I was unrelated, yeah. and I was going to be patient for, for others. <laughs> Um, but it was more related to the board's responsibility in this process and uh, what it looks like to be an active participant in this process if you're not on the steering committee, but you are on the board. I will start, and then I don't know if our board reps. I envision that part of our, when we design, we have to think about the board as a group. That's actually, that's the entity that I had in my head when I said some groups are focus groups in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. The board is one of them. And what is what does that need to look like? Um, and so, man, I don't, I don't know if others would add to that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I was seeing the board as a target group and, and this uh, information that I had written something about that. So these conversations are going to inform other areas of board work. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, we're going to be a target group because the information, we're going to have to synthesize that information in some different ways too, right? Now, we're not going to be the ones writing the strategic planning, but it might inform other areas that we do need to work on. Stephen, yeah. I would just add too, is we're, I mean, if we start designing things that are in the community, so the focus groups that we design or the, the community pieces that we would want board members to attend those as well. Yeah. You know, so that you're, you're, you're hearing what we're hearing um, on this committee. Um, and I mean, I think that, that would be just one of the best things, just the visibility of it. Just to follow up on the um, our minutes can be taken at the community, so that's yep. going to be accessible information. Uh, yeah, exactly. And to follow up on that is the um, information that the steering committee is considering, like the um, youth risk behavior survey, uh, local common assessment, and the equity pulse check-in. 
is that information can be available to the community to respond to as well, or to incorporate in their thinking and prioritization of what they want for our students? The answer is yes, and then I will ask Jeannie to expand a little bit on the equity pulse check in terms of what of that and how exactly what that data looks like and, um, and where it goes. I'm sure she's in as one of the sources of data, exactly. it sounds like, but so yeah. it's part of the data, sources yes. of data that you're accessing yeah, for. Exactly. Okay. Um, the equity pulse check data um, ends up looking like a spreadsheet um, with uh, um, three colors really like green we're doing great uh, yellow we're doing okay and red not so great right and then um, so that data will be available and then the other piece is that, that it doesn't end there um, the staff in your buildings are going to look at that data and process that data and identify strengths and areas for growth and then prioritize those areas for growth and it's important to me, it's important to my organization that we start with strengths, because you do have strengths, and because we know that people grow best when we identify and build on their strengths, just like our students grow best when we identify and build on their strengths. And so what the data will look like for each school is, here are strengths, here are areas for growth, here are the way we prioritize them. And you'll have access to all that data when it's completed. Chris, that question also reminds me of an, another question that was brought up or, or discussion that the steering committee had, um, and it's related to data, it's not directly related to that question, but it's about accountability in general. So when a once the strategic plan is there and there are action steps, those action steps will have measurements associated with them, and the board moving forward would be receiving reports from me, frankly, and obviously through lots of different methods, you'll receive reports on the strategic planning goals. So that's more of a like after process, but it's related to the data. And the reason I bring it up is because the person who asked the question, it was a good question. It was how do you make sure that this isn't just a shelf document that sits <laughs> somewhere until the next five years when you have to do one? Like how do you actually know it's being implemented? Um, and that's pretty important and, and connected to work that we're trying to do anyway, which is be more fluid at using data. Mm -hmm. So your question made me think about that. And that's part of it. It is later, but it's baked into those action steps. What are the goals? What are the action steps? And how will we measure them moving forward? I'm wondering if there's members of the community that are here too that maybe have questions? <laughs> Or Zoom. If people Zoom, are Zoom, yeah. we can see you. So if you yeah, want to raise your hand, yeah. or, so, or administrators, <laughs> you know, I see yeah. a few of our principals here too. Or seventeen. Yeah. Um, just a pro process question. I know that initially you'd envisioned this as a multi-year you know, process, and now you're looking at you know. Wrap, wrapping up by January. So, I mean, is there is sort of is there an envision you know sort of additional phase after that, or or were there things that changed in terms of what you, you know, the challenges you were looking at that made you decide to to speed things up? That's a great question, and I would say a couple things. One, um, the reason for the accelerated timeline is to give us information as quickly as possible to be able to enter into budget conversations and, and where do we go and structural conversations. And so that's, that's the abbreviated timeline. But I would also say at the same time, that this ends, like the development of the plan ends at the end of January. The measurement of it, the coming back to it, the um, how are we doing on it, that's the part that continues. Um, so it's both accelerated and it's also launching us into a different phase. Um, the other thing that I would say that is multi-year is um, if any system that's contemplating changes, whether it's implementation of strategic planning goals or bigger changes, they take, mo they take multiple years. We want the information so that we can start making decisions that get us there, but these things take time. So uh, I appreciate the, that question though, because it's it's true. This is tight. We also know that, and that's and so some of what we might learn is there. There's more engagement that has to happen even after this is over because of the compressed timeline. Yeah, I, I will add that the process is gonna will inform and answer part of that question too. As yes. we, you know, like we'll know more. Hard to hear you, Floor. 
uh, that the, the process will answer that question too, right? Like it will give us information and do we need to do more after, you know, we, don't, we don't know because we haven't really started. How often is the group meeting? We'll decide on Friday. We put out at that end, oh, we sorry. gave our um, steering committee a week to give us some feedback on dates and times that work for them. Um, I suspect um, that we'll meet as a steering committee at least once a month, maybe more at the beginning, and then there will be subgroups that do various work, like designing convenings or synthesizing data and drafting. And so then those subgroups will meet um, in addition to that at least monthly meeting. And the subgroups are only members of the steering committee that are taking different tasks? Yes. And they'll attend different convenings and gatherings, focus groups, et cetera, in order to gather that data and, um, and start using it. And so it'll be both one, probably one large uh, group meeting a month and then additional um, meetings for different teams to work on different aspects. We're a large group at uh, 16, so did, is that what you would have thought? Yes, absolutely. So we did, we did I just came asked, to see. Yeah, I'm just asking so if there's any questions, but I don't see any hands. Or... If there, so a um, couple things just to kind of wrap us up. Um, this isn't the only opportunity to have questions. I'm sure that you will think of them later. When we put this out, um, we will be sort of uh, capturing just this presentation part and, and putting it into a link so that it's viewable repeatedly. Um, so with that, we'll have that on the website. We will, again, open up whether it's just a Google form for now or whether it's a different platform, just an ongoing place to collect questions. Um, so if you think of something later, uh, if the people listening think of something later, there will be a place to be able to capture that. And I want to thank Jeannie um, and also let her get on her way because she has to drive to Maine tonight. <laughs> so you're on my way though. So. Uh, and I, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to work with this really great steering committee and in your district. It's um, I'm really looking forward to it. So. So if there's any not other questions, the board has some business after this. So if there's no other questions, I just want to thank the members of the public for being here in person and the ones that are remote too. Thank you for joining us and we're looking forward to continue to engage with you. And I forget something. No, you did not, but I'm realizing that we we do have one action item on personnel that we should take before we go into the next executive session. Oh, session. okay. Yeah, we can do that after. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Julie, for coming. Thank you. Oh, thank you, steering thank you. members, thank you. for coming. So you can. Oh, you're good. Yes. Um, wherever we sent out, or can we send that to the general email list? Yeah. The apology for the last lecture was also related to the reporting this week. Because Joe just got the email, I got the email, and I'm sure there are probably a lot of people. Yeah, uh, what do you have yeah, yeah. list, Eric? So, wherever I got like, I, I guess. I think what happened is the link, I don't think there's a list. There's it will, the updated link will go out in the newsletter, but the, and it can go out on Facebook and things like that in front of the forum. Yeah. Uh, because I think what happened is it's the agenda that's posted on the website. So it's people who've got it. Yeah. 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 Probably take action while we're still doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was scanning too. Oh, anybody? What's the what's the makeup thing? Yeah, I'm with you. So that when you're yeah, you can keep you can okay. Please do. Okay, so let's my agenda. Can I click on your agenda? Sorry. So I have no option because it's slightly different. Okay. So we're gonna move into personnel and approve. Uh, so Lisa's not online. Nope, she's no, not. She's, she's not. Taking she's taking afterwards minutes afterwards. Recording. Yeah, yeah. She's just she's gonna. She just couldn't join us, so that's yeah, why we're recording. She'll watch it after. Yeah. Okay. Everybody ready?
Okay, so we had in page three there was uh, a, a personal action to extend a leave, but uh, you're going to yep. read the motion because it's, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a than little what different is. than what's in the packet, so I'm so just going to read it. If I could have someone uh, make a motion to extend the request, the extended request to include additional time from May 22nd to June 30th, 2023, with a return to work of August 2023. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> Second. So Chris moves and Eric seconds. All those in favor, please signify. <coughs> Is there any discussion? So, no, but, yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Okay. With that, it, I'm going to be looking at a motion to go into executive session. That was the only one that we had. So, I'll move we go into the executive session for negotiations. Yeah. Second. To, to include <laughs> Megan Roy. And Suzanne, who's on the screen. Okay. As a public comment before that, we just wanted to make sure we share. Oh. Please, one thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. So let's, let's hold, do that. Let's hold okay. on that. Good yeah. voting. Yeah. All right. So we just wanted to also share that tomorrow we'll be hosting Bernie Sanders here at the school for a student uh, town hall. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, the sad part is we can't accommodate every kid for it. So we're only going to be able to accommodate about 200 of the kids um, in the auditorium for his town hall. He'll also be meeting with our teachers, some of our teachers that are available to talk about mental health and uh, substance abuse and, and what we're doing in schools and the issues that we're facing. And so. We just want to make sure that the board was aware that he would be here tomorrow. And, and how how is it? How are you figuring out which students? So we um, we wanted to make sure that we had all grade levels, and um, we just pretty much randomly picked for the the classes that were meeting during that time period to make sure that we got that. And unfortunately, it won't be everybody, and that's the that's the hard part. Okay. Maya. Do you have space for one more? <laughs> <laughs> I, I might, not just, in the classes, I might <laughs> just squeeze in a board member. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, see how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Too so Maya can be our board member? <laughs> she, can, she can be our representative. <laughs> but I was just wanted to make sure. So I'm thank sorry you, to interrupt. Thank no, you, that was, thank you for doing that. Is it a recording I actually, of the event? Um, mm -hmm. There is not going to be a recording of the event, but there will be a press release after. Because um, he's visiting. Um, Two schools today, and um, he'll be visiting. I understand Spalding and us tomorrow. So. I'm actually glad you did that. I didn't know if it was public or not. <laughs> so, so we, we I appreciate it. Went out. Yeah. It went out today. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I got it yeah. like a two as a parent. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Can I ask sort of an unrelated question, Ms. Stephen? I was just curious of to what degree you have all school gatherings here. Mm -hmm. uh, not often for all school gatherings because um, we have to use the gym for that, not the best space for everybody. And uh, the auditorium will only accommodate three grade levels at a time um, if we grade max design. it out. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it's it's a little difficult, but we do have some. Um, if we want, we open it in the year definitely with whole school events. But we'll do uh, grade level um, uh, meetings and sometimes full middle school or ninth and tenth those kinds of things. It's just difficult to do. Maggie, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I guess, and I said to Maya, like, your student groups are going, right? And she said no, that she wasn't aware of that. So I'm just surprised that there wasn't priority for, like, Glam and Glam and other groups that are So we gave priority to making sure that we had a mix of students yeah. as opposed to individual clubs that yeah. might be more specific so we wanted a, a very big cross-section of the students mm -hmm. um, by doing the classrooms um, we were able to get because most of our classrooms are heterogeneous anyway yeah. um, we were able to get a wider variety of kids and that includes like intervention classes mm -hmm. like when we put like we wanted to make sure that as many different kids as possible were there and I know that that won't include all the kids from a particular club or organization mm -hmm. but we felt it was more important mm -hmm. to have the bigger cross-section mm -hmm. Thank you. Take some yeah. pictures. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Good luck, Thank everybody. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See if he wants to dye his hair too. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. You're not going to bring that up. I'm not going to bring that up. Bye, Naya. Bye. 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 B
Bye, Bye, Bye. 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 Now we can go. Those in favor of joining this executive session for the purposes of negotiations, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries.